Hey. John and Susan, uh, thank you uh, for joining me today on Press Day. Oh, ab absolutely. Exciting times. I watched uh, Little Wing last night with my wife. Uh, we enjoyed the, the whole film with the friendship and the storyline. I'm the best friends. I like the best friend part. That's a great uh, feeling throughout this film. Uh, John, let's start with you. What inspired you to write the screenplay and make it into a movie, you know, with the themes of family and friendship, like I mentioned? Yeah, it was um, Steven Spielberg bought the article out of the New Yorker and sent it to me. And then I had the opportunity to talk to Susan. Um, and Susan had written it, you know, based on profile that she had met this young girl uh, who had racing pigeons, which is such a unique thing. And then I got the opportunity to meet her as well. I went to Boston, I met her and her mom. Mm -hmm. And there had been a divorce in her life and that was part of the fabric of the story. And I got to talk to Susan more about what had inspired her to write this story. So I kind of used that as a jumping off point. I really like writing about coming of age stories and teenagers and I like sports movies and there's a heist in there. So it's like, we kind of got a little bit of everything. Susan, what drew you to the project after like reading it and everything and like try to like be part uh, co-writer also? Well, I'm not a co-writer of the script. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Right. Um, I was drawn to the story because it was so full of surprises for me. First of all, I had no idea that pigeon racing was a sport. I had no idea mm. that people did it still. And I certainly could not picture a young girl taking part in a sport that I associated mostly with elderly men. So this was completely unexpected. And then as Sedona, the girl I profiled, told me right off the bat, her family was moving and it had never occurred to me that pigeons have one home and if she were to move and take her pigeons with her, if they ever got loose, they would go back to her old house. And the poignancy of that, the idea that you can never leave the original home that you identify as your home, struck me as, as such a rich subject combined with this crazy subculture that I wanted to look at. I just knew it was a story I wanted to write. John, can you walk us through the creative process of like developing these characters with the Caitlin and her best friend, like in the emotion and journey they embark throughout the film? I, like I said, I really do love teenage characters, and my wife and I have three kids. Only one is still a teenager, but I've been on both sides of it. I was a teenager who right. snuck out my window and made some not great choices and did some dangerous things, and I think that. I, having had teenagers and watching them go through those periods in their life, it's a really interesting time that we all can relate to. And I feel like it's always a great baseline in a movie to watch somebody come of age. And I love the voiceover in the movie. It was important. Um, it was there from the beginning um, to try to give us more insight into what she's really going through in different moments throughout the movie. So I love that it was such a strongly rooted, you know, young female character. Last question for both of you. What are you hoping for the audience pulls from this story? I really hope, first of all, that people just go along for the ride and experience this world that they probably, on one hand, know nothing about, and that is the pigeon world. And on the other hand, a world that we are all very familiar with, which is coming of age, struggling with your family, figuring out who you are and what you care about and having those ups and downs. So I see it operating on these two very different levels that I think people will find both really rewarding. I think we don't make these movies anymore, would be my argument. You know, this is a little bit of a throwback movie. So I'm so happy that it found its way to life. And I think that if people go on the ride and just kind of reach that on a life is sweet moment, you know, that life is sweet. Simplify yeah. things, like fight through all the life is not sweet moments to get to the next life is sweet moment. Amazing. Uh, Little Wing, Paramount Plus, uh, John and Susan, I want to thank you uh, for giving me a few minutes today. Thank You're you. very welcome. Uh, thank you uh, for joining me today on Press Day for Little Wing. Yeah, thanks for having me.
uh exciting times i just spoke to john and susan earlier i was telling like i i enjoyed the movie very much last night with my wife you know with the whole friendship and the bonding and uh, the little adventure the same way too uh what inspired you to take on this project and uh with the you know with the themes of family friendship yeah uh, i mean it's interesting john and i worked together before and he called me up and he said you want to read this weird little script i have about pigeon racing and I told him that, you know, my father and grandfather were actually preeminent pigeon racers in Johannesburg, South Africa in the 60s. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so I had, <clears throat> I grew up, you know, hearing about all of these crazy stories about pigeon racing. Um, so I immediately wanted to read the script. And I fell in love with it for more than just the pigeons. I fell in love with it for all the themes that you're talking about, for the ideas of, you know, liberating oneself from crisis all of these characters are going through something real and intense in this movie and ultimately you have to sort of find their way and push their way to the other side of that. Um, and that really resonated with me. Um, and uh, from that moment on, I, wa I wanted to make the movie. <clears throat> when you were reading the script, uh, what was the process like to try to bring this to life from, you know, from script to screen? I mean, to me, w you know, the thing that took me a while to really hone in on was how I was going to um, capture the tone of the mm -hmm. movie where <clears throat> I wanted it to feel very real, very human and intimate, um, but there's also a bit of a magical realist component to the film. Um, she narrates the movie, um, we're in her mind a lot, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, finding that balance of bringing a kind of a style to a very you know, intimate character piece and not letting that style overwhelm the piece um, was was something that I spent a lot of time trying to figure out. Mm -hmm. What do you think was like the biggest, like the challenges faced uh, during this, while you're trying to get this film up and running? Like any certain scenes that hit you hard, you had to go over? I think mainly it's the tone. You know, I think okay. that this movie uh, is kind of interesting tonally. You know, I think it, it's fun and it's irreverent at times. It's also, you know, poignant and there are there are dark moments. Ultimately, I think it's life affirming. Mm -hmm. And so to weave the tapestry of that tone um, is is difficult from in all aspects, from the photography to the design, to the costume design, to the uh, to, you know, every all of the editorial process. So um, that is is always tricky. Throughout the movie, you know, you see the bond between Caitlin and the bird's owner. Like, how to um, develop that connection for these two characters to, to bond with each other? With Brian and, and Brooklyn? Yes. Um, you know, I, I worked with Brooklyn a lot in rehearsal. We had about a week okay. of rehearsal together. Um, and then Brian showed up a few days before and we rehearsed a little bit. But a lot of that connection just comes from them being great actors and um, being, you know, in the scenes together, completely present, not being afraid to try things together, being, keeping every single take fresh, you know, so if one actor is doing something different, the other actor is really reacting to that. Mm -hmm. And then striking up a real camaraderie, you know, off camera too, and starting to build that relationship. So, you know, it's just, they, they, they really took that on themselves. Amazing. We have Little Wing on Paramount Plus March 13th. Uh, Dean, I want to thank you for giving me a few minutes today. Thank you.